military, servicemen and women who are so proud to serve our country, walk in and out of this room and post the flag. What we need to do as a community to address our own needs is to first and foremost put everything aside and say if there should be one special interest in this town that ought to unite Democrats and Republicans at a time where the big issue of the day is cut spending, cut spending, cut spending, deficit, deficit, deficit. And Bill, by the way, everything is being cut. Discretionary spending budget, all cut. The only exception is Defense Department and Veterans Department, as it should be. So the only special interest that ought to be accepted by both sides of the aisle is the interest of being there for our nation's heroes, our veterans. If you go up to the hill today and people see you not as, I mean, let's just be frank, we're still stigmatized. NAMI. But NAMI represents the 80%, it's over 80% for 40 and younger today, but it's 72% of overall veterans never will see them again. Never. So, veterans. That health bill was a veterans bill in that 72% overall and 80% under 40 of veterans will get their primary mental health care through the private insurance market and our community mental health centers. That means, this means veterans. And if we want to destigmatize, we want to destigmatize and win. Our message, we have to say, the veterans fight is our fight. When we fight to, to help the veterans, we fight to help ourselves. We should do it because it ennobles us as a nation anyway to be there for the very people that were there for us. But think about it. Those veterans went overseas and they kicked open the doors. They're coming home now and they're going to kick open the doors again. They're going to kick open the doors for medical breakthroughs in neuroscience thanks to the added money that we're going to get through DOD and VA research into the brain as a result of TBI and PTSD. Those veterans who kicked open the doors overseas are going to come home and kick open the doors to a medical system and a bureaucracy here at home that's Byzantine when it comes to putting together the wraparound services and the support of living care that's essential for treating anyone with a neurological disorder, traumatic brain injury, PTSD, and the symptoms of those brain injuries. Those veterans, when we change our health care system, because we're going to have to, in order to meet their needs. By changing it for our veterans, we change it for everybody. And that is why we've got to make their fight our fight. Finally, let me say, if any one of those veterans is caught behind enemy lines, this country would think of a second putting the full might of military power into going and rescuing them. Am I right? But every day in America, those veterans are being held behind enemy lines here in America. They're being held behind the enemy lines of neglect and apathy and inattention to the needs of our veterans. They're being held prisoner, prisoner in their minds of the symptoms of TDI and PTSD. And you know what? They need a first responder. They need our neuroscientists to go in there and kick open the doors and set them free from their tyranny, the tyranny of not knowing whether they're going to not only come home in body, but they're going to come home in mind. They need to know that they're going to make it home 
And this country's going to welcome them with open arms because we're going to go in there and we're going to save them because we're not going to leave anyone behind. So, you've got a lot of particular bills. You've got them on your, in your packet. I wanted to give you the big, broad message and say the, the regulations for this health bill, we've got to make sure that we allow in the scope of service to be reimbursed. We allow for non-medical to be reimbursed, because all I know is I've been a pretty good connoisseur and researcher of rehab facilities, myself personally. I've got a bit of you. And I'll tell you, they don't work. Acute episodic care for a chronic illness doesn't work. And we have a whole system out there that's bilking people and taking their money and not giving them anything in return. We've got to be able to take the evidence base and customize it to a person's needs where they live where they live. And at the end of it, we can't just say, oh, go to 90 and 90. Oh, yeah. Well, who's helping to make sure I go to 90? Who's checking in with me? I got hope that I got a good sponsor. Why is it pay for us to have someone help somebody with a chronic illness through their lives? If we have in medical homes someone to check on folks with diabetes, to make sure we check on their blood sugar, we have monitoring and all the rest. Why don't we have it for support of living, support of education, support of employment for folks all who have neurological disorders? That's the cheapest way, but guess what? It's also the most effective way in providing the kind of wraparound services and long-term chronic support that people with our illnesses have. And frankly, it requires a change in the way we measure outcomes from a purely medical, clinical model to a functional one where I'm not measured by a slip, I'm measured by whether I'm overall keeping a job, keeping housing, and keeping moving forward. So, clearly no, I'm not working my program because I am retired and I'm losing my job. But I am, uh, I am not given up the fact that I'm going to continue to fight on this one issue. If there's any one issue that I'm going to fight on as a private citizen and only for the purposes of fighting on behalf of its end goal, which is all of you um, have fought for, I thought of Danny. Um, being such a, on the forefront of this effort. My Uncle Bobby said in 1966, each person can stand up and work to change a small portion of events. And in the total of all those acts will be written the history of our generation. He didn't say we have to solve all the world's problems. All he said was, as Dr. King it inculcated in people, that this is a spiritual effort that it is the fact that we've got to save one another because we're all God's children. All of us have the spark of divinity. All of us need to be treated with dignity. And what we're doing now to too many of our brothers and sisters in our country by denying them because we don't think they're worthy by this, you know, society's view of who's worthy and who's not is absolutely immoral. You're fighting it. 